Hi everyone. In this video we're going to talk about orthogonal projections, and namely we're going to extend the idea of orthogonal projections that we saw at the beginning of the course to what it means to um, orthogonally project a vector onto a subspace, not just a, a, a vector or a line spanned by a vector. So let's just recall that the projection of some vector v onto another vector w is equal to v dot w divided by w dot w times the vector w. And this is a scalar quantity, of course, and this is a scalar quantity multiplied by the vector w. And so remember, for the picture, we had some vector w down here, maybe. This is our vector v. And note that Really, if we project onto W, we can also view this as projecting onto the subspace spanned by W, right? Because, you know, um, the span of W forms a nice little line here. And so this is our projection. And the projection is the component in the direction of W down here. Here's our projection. And we call this guy the orthogonal component, if you remember this. Yeah? I think we called this V with a hat on it or something. Yeah, or maybe V with a perp next to it. I, I forget. Yeah. And what did we satisfy here? We know that V will equal to the projection of V onto W plus that orthogonal component. Yeah. And this is how we defined things at the beginning of the course for orthogonal projections. Well, this is a projection onto a subspace, right? We can view this dashed line here as the subspace span by a single vector w. So it's a natural question. What if we wanted to project um, a vector, maybe y, onto a subspace w? Yeah? We're capital, and this is a capital W now. I know it's hard to tell. <laughs> We're capital W is a subspace of Rn. Yeah, and y is some other vector in Rn. How do we orthogonally project y onto a subspace? Well, let's draw a picture. Here is a picture of my subspace. Here's capital W, my subspace, whatever it is. In this case, I've drawn a plane, but it's really a hyperplane and however many dimensions, right? And suppose my vector y lives in Rn, but it does not live in the subspace W. So the vector y terminates somewhere outside of W. Yeah, it doesn't live in W. Well, let's plot the origin. Here's the origin, and I know the origin certainly lives in W since W is a subspace, right? So here is my vector y. Yeah. How do I orthogonally project? Visually, what's it going to be? I need to find a vector, yeah, such that whenever we kind of shine the shadow down on top of y into the subspace w, we form a right angle. The shadow cast by uh, cast by shine, oops, by shining a light on uh, above y onto the subspace w is our projection vector, yeah. Let me keep my notation. Oh, I called, oh, this isn't v hat. I called that v perp, as I recall. So let's call this y with a hat on top of it. And this will be y perp. Yeah? The perpendicular component of y. And how can we decompose y? y will be equal to y hat plus the perpendicular component, of course. Well, how could we actually define, as we saw before, if we know what the projection component is, this y hat guy, if we know what the projection is, we can find the perpendicular component by just subtracting, yeah? Really, we defined v perp as the vector v minus the projection of v onto w, yeah? So if we can find this projection component, finding the perpendic perpendicular component is pretty easy, just subtract. And we're going to do the same thing here. So how do we find, how do we define this um, projection, this orthogonal projection 
of y onto a subspace capital W. Well, first we need, I'm going to scroll up here, yeah, there we go. First we need to define an orthogonal basis. So let B be the set of vectors, V1 through Vp, be an orthogonal basis. And that's important. We have to have an orthogonal basis for the subspace W. And we're going to define the projection of Y onto the subspace W as the projection of Y onto the vector V1 plus all the way down plus the projection of Y onto the vector VP. So what are we going to do? We're going to, if we have an orthogonal basis, then we can project onto each of the basis vectors and add up the result. And that gives us the orthogonal projection onto the subspace itself. So really what we're doing is decomposing the vector y in terms of, or the, the, the projection of the vector y in terms of its, you know, finding the little coefficients here, in terms of its basis vectors. So this is a linear combination of basis vectors. So let's write this out explicitly. The projection of y, this first projection of y onto v, is y dot v1 divided by v1 dot v1 times v1 plus all the way down to y dot vp over vp dot vp times the vector vp. And remember, these are all scalar quantities. These coefficients are scalars. So we have indeed written the projection of y onto w as a linear combination of vectors in w. So without a doubt, we certainly have that pr the projection of y onto the subspace w is certainly going to be um, in the subspace w. You know, we certainly have that this is an element of the subspace w. But I know what you're thinking. How do we know that it's perpendicular? Yeah, I've defined this thing. How do we know that it actually satisfies what we want? How do we satisfy what we want? Really what we want to show now is that um, y perp here lives in w perp. So we desperately want to show now oops, we want to show that, remember that y was equal to that y hat plus y perp. And if y hat, or sorry, y perp is equal to y minus y hat, and y hat's the projection vector, we want to show, WTS is want to show, that y perp is actually an element of w perp, which is the perpendicular, uh, the subspace perpendicular to w. Well, why is this true? All that we really need to show is that y perp dot v sub i is equal to zero for all i. Remember that v i was our orthogonal basis. The basis B was equal to V1 through Vp, right? So I need to show that y perp is, is uh, dot, any, ortho, any one of these basis vectors gives you zero. And if we have that, then we'll certainly have that we live in the orthogonal subspace. So this problem should be familiar because we've, we've uh, worked a problem very similar to this in the beginning of the course, and I think it was on a quiz. So pause the video, see if you can prove this yourself. Unpack what's the definition of y perp, dot it with v sub i, and see if you can show that this is equal to zero. Give it a shot. All right, so what do we know? We know that y perp, put it here, we know that y perp dot v sub i is equal to y minus that projection vector dot v sub i, right? I can distribute dot product distributes, right? So this is equal to y dot v sub i minus, 
and let's write out in, in the definition of y hat, whenever we dot, we're going to use here, we have to have the fact that uh, we have an orthogonal basis. So all of the dot products, whenever you do y hat dot vi, will be zero, except for the term containing vi as the vector. And so we're only going to be left with um, vi dot vi divided by, um, or sorry, y dot vi divided by vi dot vi times the vector vi. This is the component that lives. But now we're dotting it with v sub i. So what do you notice here? I know that v dot i, or v, v sub i dot v sub i, divided by itself, divides to give 1. And now I'm left with y dot vi minus y dot vi subtracts to give you 0. So we have that y perp dotted with any of our orthogonal basis vectors does give you 0, which means that it must um, satisfy the condition that we want. So we definitely have that y perp lives in the orthogonal subspace. Yeah. All right. Let's do another problem. Let's mention a theorem. These things are super nice. Let W be a subspace, of course, of Rn, and let Y be any vector in Rn. Then, if we define y hat as the projection of y onto w, this projection vector that we have is the closest vector, it's the closest point in w. What does it mean to be the closest? So it's the closest point in W, or the closest vector in W, to the vector Y. It's the closest vector in W to the vector Y. What does it mean to be the closest? It means that if you look at the magnitude of Y minus the projection vector, that is smaller than the magnitude of Y minus um, vector V for any other V in W. Yeah, where v is not equal to that projection vector. So let's draw a picture to see what this means. Let's redraw our beautiful picture of our subspace w. Here's the origin. Yeah, here is y. There's my vector y there. We orthogonally project y onto the subspace w. What it says is that this projection vector, y hat, the distance between y hat, or y and y hat, what is this distance here? That's y perp, right? So this vertical distance is the smallest distance. Because if we were to find any other, if we were to pick any other vector, let's say it was over here. Let's say that this was another vector v, right? So let's draw another line. Maybe switch colors. Let's draw another vector from the origin over to that vector v. And let's look at the difference. The difference is this vector here, right? So the vector that I drew here is y minus v, right? Visually, what do we notice about the, um, the length of the perpendicular vector in red and the slanty diagonal vector in purple? This one clearly has to be longer, right? So for any other choice of vector in W, you must get more length for the, uh, the component um, that you have to add to get back to the vector Y. So, double, or, so Y hat is special in this case. Y hat is special. Y hat is the best approximation
to the vector y by elements of w. Best in sense that it in the sense that it minimizes the Euclidean distance between y and the subspace w. So y hat's the best approximation in the sense that it minimizes the Euclidean distance. We'll see in the next video that this notion is really the least squares best approximation. Yeah, and the squares come from the fact of, that you have to square each of the components in the Euclidean um, norm here. All right, so let's do an example. Let W be equal to the span of V1 and V2, where V1 is equal to 2, 5, negative 1. V2 is equal to negative 2, 1, 1. Let's find the point in W that's closest in the Euclidean sense to the vector y is our favorite vector 1, 2, 3. Before you jump on in, let's just observe these two vectors are perpendicular. If we take the dot product, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 5 minus 1 is 0. So these are perpendicular vectors, orthogonal vectors, which means that they form an orthogonal basis. Yeah, they're not normal, so it's not an orthonormal basis, but they are an orthogonal basis, which means that we can define the projection vector that we're looking for um, immediately without doing any tricky business. I know what you're thinking. What if I didn't give you an orthogonal basis? We would have to do something called the Gram-Schmidt process, which we'll talk about in a couple of videos, which will allow us to convert a basis to an orthogonal basis. So we'll do that in a few videos, but for now I'll give you an orthogonal basis. Yeah. So pause the video, see if you can solve this problem. Give it a shot. All right, so we know that all that we need to compute is that projection vector y hat. And this is going to be the projection of y onto the first vector v1 plus the projection of y onto the second vector v2. And we know how to do this, hopefully immediately, right? I think that the first guy becomes 9 thirtieths times the vector v1 plus 3 sixths times the vector v2. Yeah. Whenever you compute those scalar constants. And I think at the end of the day, we should get something that looks like negative 2 fifths to one-fifth. Yeah. All right. Question. What's the distance from y to the subspace w? How do we find the distance between a vector, one, two, three, and a subspace w? It's asking here to compute the magnitude of y minus y hat, right? That is the distance between the vector y and its projection, which is the closest thing, right? So this will give the distance. So pause the video, compute this yourself. So we just need to compute the magnitude of 1, 2, 3 minus this vector, right? So that looks like it's going to be... Um, Uh, 1 minus negative 2 fifths is 7 fifths, 2 minus 2 is 0, 3 minus 1 fifth is going to be 14 fifths, and all that we do is find the magnitude of this vector, yeah. which is the square root 49 over 25 plus 14 squared over 25, whatever that is. All right. 
All right, guys, so I hope that this helps. Um, I'll post another homework set for you. In the next video, we get to do something really exciting. We will solve the least squares problem, which will allow us to um, find curves that best approximate a certain set of data, depending on what types of curves we want. So I hope that you find that really interesting. As always, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out via email, or we can set up a time to Zoom. And I look forward to all of the questions that you have. Um, and I appreciate your watching. Thanks so much.